It was a peaceful afternoon in London, UK. John Baldock was sitting in the backyard of his townhouse in South London. That was when all of a sudden he heard a massive thud right next to him. And there imprinted into the ground was a man. The man seemed to have fallen out of the skies from absolutely nowhere. But after police looked into it, they realized this man had come from an airplane. This happened a few months ago in 2019. And today we're going to look at this mysterious case and how it happened. I'm Charlie and today we're going to look at how a man fell from an airplane. But before we get into it, why not subscribe and press the notification bell too. On the 2nd of July 2019, a Kenya Airways flight set off. There was more than 180 passengers on this 4,250 mile flight. They were going from Nairobi, Kenya to Heathrow Airport in London, UK. The plane made it a gigantic stretch of the way. But when the plane was flying over Clapham, South London, something strange happened. A plane spotter who was using an app to track the plane from a local park saw something fall from the plane. And then, moments later, John Bulldog, who was sunbathing in his garden, heard a gigantic thud. He looked right next to him in total fear and saw a frozen man. The man had shattered the paving stones in his garden and made a gigantic hole in the grass. John quickly called the police who investigated this. And they soon found that the frozen man had fell from the passenger flight from Kenya. It had plunged from a height of more than 3,000 feet. But how did it happen? Well, we have to reverse back to Kenya. They believe that at the Nairobi airport, the man had previously broken in. He had then hidden himself in the landing gear compartment of the aircraft. But, of course, unlike the inside of the airplane, that part is not heated, so the man froze. The police have no idea why the man did this, but they did release this e-fit of the man. But here's where things get weird. The police in the UK and Kenya have not been able to work out who this guy is. And they also have no idea why he climbed into the airplane. He was found with a bag which contained a water bottle and a Fanta bottle. There was also a pair of sneakers, a few Kenyan shillings and a pen. The man was wearing a blue tracksuit with Wildcat softball on it. And the bag had the letters MCA written on them. The man was fairly young in his early 30s, but so far none of his family or friends have come forward to say that it was him. When the landing gear of the airplane was put down, the man fell out, but experts say he would have been frozen solid by that time. John Bulldog, who was laying a meter away from where he landed, said his body was like a block of ice. And John is actually lucky to have survived. If the man fell just a meter to the left, he would have squashed John. After all, he was falling at a speed of nearly 200 miles an hour. The man in the airplane would have had barely any oxygen for about 9 hours. He would be at 40,000 feet in the air, where the temperature is around minus 60 degrees centigrade. That's minus 140 Fahrenheit. But it's a total mystery as to who this guy was and why he crawled into the landing gear of this airplane. What if everyone on an airplane jumped at the same time? One of the most common airplanes in the world is a Boeing 777. It's the world's largest twin jet and it seats around 300 passengers. Each one of these costs around $5 billion and they've been being produced since 1993. Because of this, if you've been on vacation any time in the past 10 years, you've likely been on one of these planes. But what if at some point everyone jumped up on that airplane? Now, this has never been done before, as I'm pretty sure the pilots would freak out and emergency land. Also, many people have fear of flying, so I doubt you could convince an entire airplane to jump all at the same time. But luckily, we've done the math, and we can work out exactly what would happen if everyone jumped at the same time. So, let's break it down. Let's say the Boeing 777 has the average amount of passengers, 300. And let's say the average passenger weighs 75 kilograms. That's 165 pounds per person. So 75 kilograms times 300 is a weight of 22.5 thousand kilograms. Or to put it more simply, 22.5 tons. So let's imagine that entire force being raised up on the airplane and falling all at the same time. That would equal a mass of 22.5 tons weighing down on the airplane. Convert that into pounds and that's 45,000 pounds going down on this plane. But to put that into perspective, we need to look at the plane itself, let's say a Boeing 777. The average Boeing 777 weighs around 300,000 pounds. 
And remember, this is without any baggage, passengers, or aircraft fuel. With all of those things on it, which it would have in the air, then this number would be closer to 400,000 or 500,000 pounds. Or to put it more simply, 200 to 250 tons. So this 250 ton aircraft will be moving at around 500 miles per hour. This will be the average speed a Boeing 777 is going mid-air. So now we have all the numbers in order, what would happen if the weight of 22.5 tons weighed down on this 250 ton aircraft? Well, the two magic numbers here are 250 tons and 500 miles per hour. That is the weight and speed of the aircraft. Obviously, these are really big numbers, and it makes the combined weight of all of our passengers, 22.5 tons, seem pretty small. That means that brief 22.5 ton weight going down would not have much impact on the aircraft. Remember, the weight of all the passengers is less than 10% of the aircraft's weight. And the craft is going so quickly too, at 500 miles an hour, meaning it would likely be pretty unfazed. Now, one thing that would happen is, the altitude of the aircraft would decrease slightly. But all modern aircrafts have autopilot systems. This means this slight decrease in altitude would automatically be corrected. So, really the aircraft would go down slightly and then go right back up thanks to autopilot. If you were in the pilot's cabin or the front of the aircraft, you may also feel some vibrations. Now, you may be surprised that everyone jumping on an airplane doesn't actually do much. But here's the mind-blowing thing, aircrafts actually have to face forces much more strong than that. Think about it, aircrafts have to fly through every kind of severe weather condition. Aircrafts have even been known to fly through hurricanes and tornadoes before, and its common aircrafts have to fly in extreme winds. What pushes aircrafts down much more frequently than people jumping would be something like a microburst. A microburst is a very extreme, strong force of wind going down on the aircraft. This can happen in storms or in very bad weather conditions an aircraft's flying in. When this happens, the autopilot system kicks in and corrects it. The autopilot system will increase the engine's power and pitch the aircraft upwards. As soon as an airplane goes into the air, you can take solace in knowing the autopilot system monitors the aircraft's altitude. And it does this with pinpoint precisions and speed. This means if an aircraft's altitude goes slightly too high or too low, it will quickly correct it. So if all 300 passengers teamed up and tried to bring the aircraft down by jumping, they could not do it. Even if it did push the aircraft down slightly, autopilot would correct it within seconds. Even a microburst of wind, which could equal more like 900 passengers jumping at the same time, still wouldn't do much. Anyone who has a fear of flying, don't worry, an aircraft is built like a rock. The aircraft's fuelage, aka its body, is built to deal with absolutely any weather condition, and that includes passengers having an impromptu rave on board. But now that we've answered this airplane question, let's just answer one more. That is, why don't planes fly over Tibet? Many people have been wondering why planes never fly over the Chinese region of Tibet. This has been an aviation mystery which many people have wondered for years. Well, part of the reason the flight path is banned is because of the Himalayan mountains. Planes reach pretty much all over the world, but the autonomous region in western China, Tibet, has no airplanes going over it. But a few years back, an airline worker named Tim Hibbitz answered the question, why don't airplanes fly over Tibet? He said partly it's because of the very high mountains. These mountains are around 20,000 feet in the air. And under most conditions, aircrafts can fly way higher than this, to around 30,000 feet. But that does not work over mountains like Mount Everest. This is because decompression can happen in the cabin if it goes too high. Even if they deployed oxygen masks, these only have around 20 minutes worth of oxygen for each passenger. So if there was decompression in the cabin, the plane would have to fly lower than the mountains. Otherwise, the passengers would not be able to breathe. However, flight operators say that planes can only fly at a minimum of 10,000 feet. This area is a massive part of Asia, so it would be impossible to escape so quickly. Basically, it's so remote, it's a terrible place to have an emergency. And because there's a very real threat of a loss of cabin pressure, this means it's simply too dangerous to fly over. Also, if you lost an engine and you had to descend, you wouldn't be able to, as you'd crash into a mountain. So that's why if you look at an online flight map, you'll see no planes whatsoever flying over Tibet. 
But now it's time to make your opinion heard. Vote in the poll in the top right corner, have you ever had a terrible experience on an airplane? If you want some more amazing videos, then check out my second channel. There'll be a link to that on screen in a moment. But as always, thanks for watching. Check out some more videos on screen right now. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and if you haven't already, what are you waiting for? Subscribe to Top 10s.